And then the girls also this morning did some uh, bog roll beans. Today in the UK is May Day, which is kind of a uh, one of our bank holidays. We've got two in May, so they are probably the busiest time to get gardening. And if you saw the state of our local garden centre, um, you'd see that we're not the only ones doing our bit today. This is a bit of a gardening type video again. So if you're only here for the DIY, then stay tuned to the channel and we'll, uh, we'll get back on the tools soon. Um, yesterday was pretty productive. I had the girls out here in their pyjamas and we managed to get majority of our stuff potted on into bigger pots. Uh, yeah, so this week we wanted to get everything kind of to the next stage. So all of our tomatoes we grew in like little cells uh, in like plug trays and then we've pricked them out and just jumped straight to this size pot which I think is 13 centimetres or so across so they're going to be fine in these until they're ready to go out to the big ones. Uh, all of these are going to be grown inside the polytunnel and we're going to use those big uh, 30 litre buckets which are full of rubble at the moment but once we've taken all that to the tip these will be potted into those. I can't imagine that we're going to fit all these in this small polytunnel so we'll basically just pick the best ones and then if we've got spares we'll give them to friends or maybe even just try and put them outside. Uh, some of these varieties I'm sure cope. We've also grown cucumbers and I've never grown them before. Um, but, uh, I, you know, again, we've grown five. We have five seeds, all germinated. And I imagine we'll probably only keep two or maybe three of those uh, in here and we'll kind of grow them up the side. Gorgettes will obviously go out into the garden. And the girls also this morning did some uh, bog roll beans, um, if you excuse the, the expression, but these are just little toilet rolls that we've been keeping, and we decided to do little runner beans in there. Uh, and they've done some more runner, uh, you never need as many runner beans as you grow, but I, I think we'll just, we'll get rid of the other ones. Uh, we'll give them away, but there'll be some uh, runner beans to grow up a wigwam. We've got a little sweet corn here as well, but I'm, I'm tempted not to plant this in the veg patch itself. I think I'm going to use one of the flower beds at the bottom of the garden, which is pretty empty. And then one of the other jobs, I think, is to get these lettuce out. They could probably stay in here a little bit longer. Um, but the little raised bed there is ready. And providing we keep on top of any slugs, I think these can go out and they'll start bulking out a bit. The last tray of beetroot to go out now. I've done two trays already and some chard. But I'll take you out and show you how these are going in. So we, we are completely starting afresh with the garden this year. Um, we have used raised beds in the past. So this is kind of a little bit new to us. We've done all of the, these are all beetroot here. I don't know why we grew so much beetroot uh, and rainbow chard down there. But I'm just kind of trying to work out a nice simple path, a simple layout, quite traditional just rows all the way to the top uh, on both sides. So that's the plan. I think I'm going to put the other beetroot, this is candy beetroot, the kind of stripy stuff. The other more traditional stuff I'm going to move somewhere else otherwise it's just going to look a bit boring. I'm trying to work out where we're going to run our path down here. Uh, I'm fairly happy, I just put some bamboos out to kind of lay out uh, some ideas. I think I'm going to get a string line, just get a nice straight kind of uh, line to work on just bang some pallet wood or some old strips of something down here just so we've got like a little visual border um, that they don't go clomping their little wellies everywhere. Right, next thing we'll do is get a bit of lettuce put out. I'm going to use the raised bed just for lettuces, kind of herbs, anything like that, which is quick turnover and, you know, it's a bit nicer to have off the ground uh, and easy access.
and again with these I'll hold back some in the polytunnel and we'll kind of see what works best. It's all a bit of an experiment this year. I'm pretty sure that because the tomatoes are such a later crop really that we could probably get one really good hit out of lettuce before we need the polytunnel for the tomatoes. You know, we could get some shelving or staging up in there and grow loads of salad crops and then come June or whenever the tomatoes get potted up and we can clear it out and start again. Next we'll plant some radish which is like the turbo crop. It's the most rewarding thing to grow even if you don't like it because, <laughs> because after a week or two you've got nice big rows of healthy plants. So these I bought three years ago. And they say they're out of date, but I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. And they're really good sized seeds, so they're really easy to sow, especially if you plant them with kids. I must try and get some mild radish, because these ones are very, very fiery. Still got loads left. Oh well. I mean, it might be that the chickens like them, in which case I could grow some just for them to use up the seeds. And of course you can sow them with other seeds, like carrots and things, because they'll shoot up. But first of all, they'll, they'll come up so quickly that you'll be able to see where you planted the carrot, but also you can harvest them before, that bell, uh, before they start competing with the carrots themselves. Next I'm gonna go in with a few herbs because I don't really want the whole bed to be bare until the seeds come up so I'm just going to plant a kind of a, a thick row of parsley and then again leave half of the tray in the polytunnel as backup because again it, you know one big frost or something could knock all these out but I'm impatient and it'd be good to get something in the ground this weekend.